we are going to continue on our introductory series on unreal engine in this video we are going to look at camera in unreal engine how you can set aperture how you can set width height expect ratio how you can set focal length how you can do depth of field in camera in unreal engine so let's get started my name is viral shah and welcome back to my channel render rebels i have opened a scene which i created in unreal engine let's have a look at this scene as you can see our hero object is our car here we are having some pebbles on the terrain here we are having some big rocks here some water so we are getting this reflection and if i go upwards you can see we are having this cliffs here so i have created this scene keeping in mind the cinematic look of the car we are now going to create cameras for this scene we are going to create some horizontal cameras some vertical cameras and some real world cameras if you go to create here and if you go to cinematics and you can drag and drop your sign camera actor here as soon as i do that you can see our camera is created here and if you see it's going inside our scene here so let's just take it upward a bit and now you can see we are getting something like this we need to rotate our camera so let's just turn on this angle snap here let's just press e here and let's just rotate our camera by 180 degrees here now let's take our camera backward a bit so now you can see we are getting this result if you want to switch to your camera view you can do that also just click on perspective here and then go into sign camera actor here and now you can see we are seeing from this camera angle so now we can hold right mouse button and press s and we can go backwards here and this is how easy it is to create camera in unreal engine now let's look at another way to create a camera in unreal engine so let's get out of this camera now let's just find a good view here so let's say you want to create camera something like this here you can do it easily here you just need to click on this burger icon here go to create camera here and create your sign camera actor this will create a camera with the view that we are viewing in unreal engine so let's now switch again from perspective to our sign camera actor 7 here and now you can see we are looking from this camera so this are the two ways in which you can create your camera in unreal engine now let's look at the parameters of the camera here so let's just switch again to our default camera which was something like this this is looking good by default now let's change some focal length some aperture our depth of field and all that stuff in our sign camera actor so let's just click on this sign camera actor which we are going to use let's just start with our film back here if i click on this film back here you will find different different cameras here if i switch to dslr you will find a dslr effect which is find in the real world camera if you want to switch to film camera of 16 is to 9 resolution you can click on 16 is to 9 film and now you are getting this 24 mm by 13.5 mm sensor width and sensor height if i switch again to digital film here you can see our sensor width and sensor height is changing in unreal engine so you can give your custom sensor width and sensor height also or you can have this presets which are created by unreal engine so let's go for imax 70 mm and now you can see we are getting this 70 mm sensor width and sensor height into our scene here so let's just switch back to our film here and now you can see this is a perfect 1920 into 1080 16 is to 9 resolution let's say you want to work for instagram you can reverse this sensor width and sensor height you will get a 1080 into 1920 resolution here so let's just go to 13.5 into 24 and this is the your instagram result that you can use a portrait result you can use for youtube shots also so this is how you can tweak your width and height as per your requirement of the shot now let's say you want some real world camera values here of sensor width and sensor height let's say you want some values of re alexa or maybe black magic camera so there is a website in which they provide you width and height along with the resolution of the scene so let's just go to vfx camera database this is the website that i'm talking about vfxcamdb.com i will leave the link in the description so you can check this out they are divided by category wise here you can see it's written cinema and television cameras then if i scroll downwards you can see we are having action cameras like dji gopro sony then we are having drone cameras of dji then we are having dslr cameras so we are having all the cameras here and you can work as per your uh, scene as per your requirement 
of the scene you can switch the values of the sensor width and sensor height by getting this result so let's just try one here so let's have this re alexa camera as soon as you click on the re alexa you will see the real world camera here image then if i scroll downwards you can see the sensor dimension if i go to unreal engine this is our sensor width and sensor height here so you can say it's 23.76 mm by 13.37 mm and the resolution that it is outputting is 2880 into 1620 so let's just try to set this so let's go to our unreal engine let's just copy this let's just paste this into our sensor width here and let's just paste our height here so let's just control c and let's just control v here and now you can see we are getting this re alexa camera in unreal engine let's try one more here so if i scroll downwards and if i go to black magic production camera 4k you can see this is a 4k camera here okay and this is having the sensor width of 21.12 into 11.88 so let's just copy this and let's just type here 11.88 and this is how it's looking for our 4k resolution you can see we can go up to 3840 into 2160 this is our image resolution of this camera now let's just go to our black magic cinema camera and now you can see this is the camera that we are talking about and this is having a lot low sensor dimension so let's just have this also 15.81 into 8.88 so let's just type here and here it was 8.88 and this is how it is looking if i go for gopro hero 7 black and if i click on that link here you can see we are having this gopro hero black image and we can go for this sensor width so let's just go for 6.17 into 4.63 so 6.17 into 4.63 here and now we are getting this gopro resolution so you can use this also so this is how easy it is to create real world cameras in unreal engine so let's just go to 16 is to 9 film and then you can play with your sensor width here and this is how you can get a cinematic result i scroll downwards you will find here we have a focus setting here focus method we are going to look at this in a moment but first we are going to look at our focal length here so as you can see here our current focal length is set to 35 here now you need to understand what is focal length so if i narrow down the focal length to around 10 or 12 or 20 it's a wide angle focal length if i go from 35 to 80 it's a prime lens focal length and if i go above 80 like 250 400 or something like that then it's a zoom lens so if i want a wide view here i can decrease the focal length so let's just decrease the focal length and you will see what i am talking about you can see we are getting this wide panoramic type of image into our scene because we have set the focal length to 23 let's just go extreme like 10 here and now you can see we are getting that wide view here a wide camera angle view here and you can see we are not getting that straight horizon line we are getting this bending lines here so this is how you can change the focal length of the camera so if i want a proper prime lens shot i can go up to 50 here and now you can see we are getting this prime lens shot here if you want a zoom shot of your car you can take it up to 200 here and now you can see we are getting this zoom shot but we are getting this blur result here so the next step that comes here is our focus method so here you can see we are having three type of focus method manual tracking and disable so if i click on disable you can see we are not getting any depth of field here so let's just enable this let's just click to manual here and you can see we are getting this beautiful depth of field but we are getting it to our whole image now to set the depth of field here we have a tool which we can use here which we call draw debug focus plane if i turn it on here and if i just decrease our manual focus distance here, now you can see we are getting this purple plane here and if i just move this here you can see we are getting focus on this object here we are getting depth of field here and if i just turn this focus off 
you can see we are getting this depth of field in the background also. So with the help of focus plane here, you can set your depth of field or else there is one more method. You can click on this manual focus distance. You can just pick this picker here. And let's say if I want to focus on this rock here, I can just click here. And now you can see our plane has switched to this rock here. And if I disable this draw debug focus plane, you can see we are now focusing on this rock here. So this is how easy it is. You can use the picker also or you can use this draw debug focus method and just have your focus tweaked here. Now if I close this here, you can see we are having this tire in the focus into our scene. We are getting this depth of field here. Now if you want to increase the depth of field effect, you can switch the current aperture. So if I take it higher to let's say 7 here, you can see we are not getting that much depth of field around here, but we are getting this depth of field here and here as well. And now if I take around 1.2, you can see we are getting this more depth of field into our scene because our aperture is set to 1.2. Generally, I set it between 1.8. I don't go below 1.8 because 1.8 is a good number. But if I am taking this zoom shot here, I tend to use around three. So I get depth of field here and here as well into our scene. And this is basically clear here. Okay, so you can play with the current aperture here and you can tweak your depth of field distance as well with the help of our focus method here. Now there is one more thing here. So if I just uh, do something like this here, now you can see again we are not getting this focus here. So our focus is now changing. So how you can basically make sure when you are animating your camera or when you are moving your camera that this tire should be in focus always. So for that you need to turn this to tracking here and just you need to make sure that your tracking focus setting is selected. So let's just pick this logo here and now you can see we are having this Ferrari. Let's just do something like this here and now you can see our focus is always on our car because we have set our tracking focus method to our car here. So this is how easy it is to track any object. You just need to pick it in your camera and it will make sure that it will track that object here. Now let's look at some more parameters into our camera. So let's just scroll downwards here and now you can see we are getting the same effects that we are getting in our post process volume. So if you are using any of the settings here, then the post process volume will be overridden. So if I am setting the exposure of each and every camera, then if I get out of the camera, the post process will be same, but I am tweaking only the exposure of that camera. So let me show you what I am telling. So let's just go to our lens here. Let's just open the exposure. So if I overwrite this exposure here to manual, now you can see we are getting this dark result because we need to set our exposure compensation here. So let's just start with 8 here. And now you can see we are getting this dark result. But if I go out of my camera, you can see our result is again light here. So this is happening because we are overriding post process settings into our camera here. So you can have each and every camera and you can have different different exposures, different different color grading, different different lumen settings into your camera and you don't need to worry about post process volume and you don't need to tweak it again and again. So let's just go to our sign camera actor 7. Now let's just increase the exposure compensation to around 11. And now you can see we are getting this beautiful result. So let's just take it around 10 here. Now what we can do, we can also add the chromatic abbreviation into our camera here. So let's just do a chromatic abbreviation of 0.3. And now you can see we are getting this chromatic abbreviation here. Now we are going to go to local exposure here. We are going to turn on this highlight contrast scale, shadow contrast scale and detail strength. We can take the detail strength to 1.4 and now you can see we are getting this really good contrast into our scene. You can just decrease your highlight contrast and you can see our image highlight is reducing into the scene. If you find your scene is way too dark, you can also play with your shadow contrast scale and it will uplift the contrast of the shadow into your scene. 
So this is how easy it is. Now let's say you want to color grade this scene. You can go to temperature here. You can use the temperature of white balance or color temperature. And now if I want a more bluish into my scene, I can tweak it to 7500 here. And now you can see we are getting this beautiful result here. Let's just go to global here. Let's just increase decrease somewhat saturation. So let's just go to 0.8 and now you can see we are getting this washout look here. If you want you can increase it to 1.4 and you are getting this saturated look here. So you can tweak here as per your requirement as per your color grading. You can also go to your mid tones and you can play with your contrast and saturation also. Now let's say you want a high quality reflections of lumen into this scene then you can do that also. You can override your post process volume here. So this camera will have more lumen reflections than our overall scene because this is now overriding our post process volume. This is only going to affect this camera only. So if I set the method to lumen here and if I go to our lumen global illumination, let's just take the scene quality details to three by three. We are going to have a separate video here to explain how lumen works but right now you can do this settings this will give some really nice results to your scene now we can go to our reflections and we are going to make sure that we are having some high reflections here so we are going to switch this to hit writing for reflections and we are going to aim for high quality reflections okay so this is how you can override each and every settings you can override path tracing also from your scene so let's say if you are using part tracing you are using some other settings in post process volume but you want certain high samples for this camera view you can override this part tracing setting for this specific camera only so you can do that also if you notice here we are having this color grading this exposure in this camera if i go out you will see we are not having that thing so this is our with our post process volume and this is with our camera so I have overridden all the post process settings that I wanted into this camera so this is how easy it is to override your post process settings into each and every camera that's it for this video of introduction to camera in Unreal Engine in next video we are going to create a cinematic automotive visualization shot with the help of sequencer we are going to animate cameras we are going to animate depth of field we are going to animate focus distance so we can get some really cool close-up shots really good wide angle shots and some mid shots so see you in next video if you like my video please subscribe to my channel till then take care bye bye guys